Hello, I'm David DeCosmo. Welcome to ECTV Live. I'm joined by my co-host, Rusty Fender. Rusty, welcome. Good to see you, Dave. Hey, summertime, a lot of great activities, a lot of them sponsored by Lackawanna County through its Arts and Culture Department. Maureen McGuigan runs the boat there. Hey, Maureen. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> well, you do. I mean, you're, you're, at the, you're at the helm. And Maureen, you know, one thing about the county, I'm always impressed at how much the county does. There are a lot of arts uh, and, and cultural activities, you know, offered by many organizations. Mm -hmm. Counties don't often and always step in to do that and be part of it. But for years here, that's really been an intention. Yeah, I, I always talk about that as a, a really good public policy. And our all commissioners, I think it goes beyond party lines. They see the value of arts and culture. So it's been in existence since 2004. We've had this funding through the county that allows us to fund those great organizations, but also do our own programming, get involved, you know, for community revitalization right. and, and all and that good quality of life stuff. especially with spiraling yearly costs, too. It's a good thing that gets bigger every year, not gets cut back every year. Yeah, no, that's the beauty of having a small amount of money that just goes towards it we always have that and we can in the industry I work in leverage other you know we yeah. give a little bit of money then others go out and raise money so it, it allows us to do these um, sometimes big productions like the July 3rd fireworks that'll be coming yeah. up later on in the summer so yeah we do we do a lot of different types of programming so well, and, and before we get into all of the specifics I want to talk about one that you, you just had but also coming up, because you're based over at the Trolley yeah, Museum. Yeah, well, that's something in 2008, they merged some departments. So the Trolley Museum, even though it's a separate entity, falls yeah. under the umbrella of arts and culture. And I have to say, the past few years, we have an amazing staff who's been really doing some creative programming. So we've increased our programming. Well, at what the a Trolley collection Museum. over there. What a, I mean, yeah. the history of the electric trolley car, when the excursions run, speaking of which you just hauled some kids away with the Easter Bunny not too well, long ago. Well, I was just going to say, we had a re that's one of our new programs that we just started this year, and we had a record. We had 200 people ride the trolley with oh, the Easter great. Bunny. That's great. And actually, our season will be open um, starting April 28th, so now it'll be open for the four times a day you can ride the trolley car. But we've been increasing those special programs. So for Memorial Day, we'll have some music. Um, also, again, for uh, July 4th weekend, and of course, we don't want to think about winter yet, but we always <laughs> do the big Santa trolley. But yeah, the Easter, yeah. we were really surprised because we didn't know it was the first time we did uh, it. They also run some excursions to the baseball games? Yeah, that's another, um, that's been a long time successful program. Um, we run them on Sundays, there is a schedule online, and everybody loves that event. Yeah, and coincidentally, the trolley line goes from the museum all the way up to the stadium through the crown I think, I think the longest crown urban you, tunnel oh, in the united states yeah. the crown avenue tunnel the longest it's, it's interurban awesome. that is correct the old lower line that's it's correct. actually a really neat ride even though it starts in the city you kind of meander and then you're in this kind of really pretty section by roaring brook you're and right. you go through the tunnel and then you end up at the baseball stadium you think you're in the middle of the woods yeah. but it's actually in it's, the heart of downtown scranton yeah. on the uh, northern it's side really toward unique. the harrison avenue bridge yeah. a lot of trolley museums only have the cars that go around the yard but we actually have a real a excursion. long run. Oh, yeah. yeah. And to yeah. use the same trackage they did in 1903 when the Laurel Line, the Lackawanna and Wyoming Valley was called the Laurel Line started. That's incredible. I mean, yeah. 115 years ago, 114 yeah. years ago. Amazing. Yeah, it yeah? is pretty cool. It, it is. It's something for all ages because adults love it just as Took much as Took a lot of money kids. to redo that tunnel because yeah. there were cave-ins and water in there, of course, for, you know, 50 yeah. years of non-use. Nothing's easy, <laughs> but, uh, but, it's, not, but it pays off in the long cheap. run. Yeah, 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 no. <laughs> I think a lot of people discover the Trolley Museum, too, when they come to Steamtown, yes. not realizing exactly. the facilities are right across the, the yard. Yeah, it's a little yeah. unique because we are actually on the National Park Service, just like Yosemite, Steamtown's a national park. Right. Um, so they actually own our building, but the county supports the operational cost. So right. it's a partnership. But you're right, we get people you, from all over the world come down to that whole complex for sure. the trains and trolleys. Well, so I mean, and summer is going to be a busy time for that, but there are all kinds of other activities. Yep. And you know, even again, before we get into some of those activities, there's some very static art and culture offered where you don't really have to have a tour guide. You don't have to have a formal program. All you gotta do is walk around the Lackawanna County Courthouse. That's so Courthouse true. itself, fantastic right. building. Especially with all yeah, the, the architecture, uh, especially the, the yep. new additions the past couple of years, where they increased the sidewalk area and yeah. things like yeah. that. So it's been redone. Uh, the monuments there. Yes. Uh, we have, I believe, two Medal of Honor winners from Lackawanna County, both memorialized uh, on the square. 
Um, there are some other arts and cultural, again, you can walk, just walk all around the John Mitchell statue. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. I love that. And there's actually a beautiful, we're trying to, one of the things the county would like to do is the original, there's the John Mitchell and Adams. Right. Originally there was a sidewalk that took you behind because there's a really great relief of a coal mining family in the back, but a lot of people miss it right now because oh, the yeah, sidewalk I is, oh, I didn't know that so um, wow. we want to replace the sidewalk, which will encourage people to not just look at the beautiful bronze sculpture of him, but to walk to the back of the sculpture. Oh, that's so yeah. um, you're right, you could spend at least an yeah, hour we never walking knew around. That. That's interesting. There's a famous yeah, really. Hope Horn, which is another one we hope to redo. Hope was a local artist here who did quite well in the national art world, and she has a sculpture called Red Wing. It's kind of angular, so that's another one we'd like to restore a little bit. So the courthouse is fun to watch. I, yeah. I grew up wandering around. It was like a park yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. I've always so, liked yeah. it, and, and uh, you know, some of the things that have been added, some of them are, are military in nature, yes. and of course with uh, Mitchell, the labor history of our area. Right. Um, it, it's worth a walk around the country. I guess, could, guess you could give a tour if you wanted. Mm -hmm. Well, there is. I think the Historical Society has published a little book of downtown sculptures, so you can you can get the book and kind because there's there's some around town as well. But the courthouse has the bulk of right, them, of right. course. And now we have the Piazza del Arte wall, which is kind of nice because it recognizes some of our. Um, entertainers and artists that were from the region. So yes, that's kind yeah. of fun to, to look at. You can at do a well. whole block just on that. I yeah, suspect yeah, we, have, you we, have, we have such a rich history here. Something. Yeah. Now, now, those things get spotted a lot when you have entertainment right at the courthouse. Are you doing that again this year? Oh, yes. Our arts um, on the Square Festival has just grown. So we will be down there again at the end of July. But it should start previously with that. We will do the Scrantastic Spectacular, which is the old-fashioned 4th of July celebration. That's actually on July 3rd right, <laughs> here. Right. But we have the Philharmonic, and that'll happen again. So that kind of How about off. Arts and Fire this year? Is that going to that be That is happening. The, uh, Iron uh, Furnaces uh, Yes, that's coming Cedar. up in June. Mm -hmm. Yep, so that's that's kind of kicks that's off this summer. That's a big event. And again, I, with the first iron, as we all know, the first iron T-rail was right. made yeah, in the United so States. Yeah, so that's, that's definitely huge. happening. Whatever, I think it's June 3rd is that Saturday. So that kicks off the summer. And then, of course, we have First Friday, often uses the courthouse. Yeah, are you involved uh, with that a bit this year, too? I'm really excited. First Friday is just doing a lot of great things, and they, they've actually been trying to expand. So they've added a third Thursday, which is more <laughs> performance-based. So First Friday has a lot of visual arts and some performance, but this is going to be more on music. And the thing I'm excited about is I'm working with them to incorporate more dance and physical oh. activities. So... We're going to launch on the June 2nd, First Friday, a kind of, we don't have the title totally decided yet, but something like Healthy Scranton. Okay. So there'll be different areas where people can try um, different types of dance. But we're also going to, on, in June, focus, remember Hopscotch? Did you play Hopscotch? Oh my when gosh. <laughs> Sure did. You're going so back a bit here. We're trying yeah. to encourage people to play because, you know, you can get your exercise in many ways. It doesn't have to be formally going to the – and to encourage kids especially to get out. So we're going to have artists draw 12-foot uh, hopscotch boards around the square. They still do hopscotch. I was the head hopscotch. Well, I don't know. We're going to start the hopscotch, hopscotch revolution, though. Wow, that's one so, point. You pick up the yeah. – uh, yeah, absolutely. And then you July – played, Dave? That's, uh, <laughs> I, actually, I did not, but I've seen it done. Absolutely. Uh, and it – it's Boy, just I fun. mean that that that's such a historic <laughs> game. You bet. Because it was something that people could do without spending a. Well, that's what. It, yeah, and it's simple, and Correct. you know, we're gonna we're gonna give some artists. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah I'm excited that's a, about that. That's a great idea. And then, like I said, the dancing that came out of a couple. Um, 2016, we had this umbrella dance on Courthouse Square. Um, we did an art installation, but we also added. We had Ballet Theater of Scranton. Um, do like a public dance that was simple, but everybody could participate with oh their umbrella. Well, well, look at so, the movie of the year. You got to go what's hot. You yeah, have to go that's right. That's the next, right, the big, next big thing. They were the ahead of our the times. Yeah. yeah. So we took that. I, they And First Friday has been trying to do more of that. So like so different sections of the city will have different types of dance. And we're going to try to continue this all through October. So July will be jump rope. We'll have jump rope on the square. And then hula hooping will be in August. And in case you're, you're just for yeah. those who have been asleep for a while <laughs> first friday is literally that the first yeah, friday of each month <laughs> um you can go around scranton and there are uh artists mm -hmm. uh there are uh, musicians here and there 
Uh, some of them outside of uh, establishments. Yeah, the summers are a lot of fun, especially, mm -hmm. you know, when the weather's nice. Because but it goes all year. It's all year. You'd be surprised the February one was packed. That's what's great. Because it was 70 degrees well, all through true. February. We yeah, get this, the bad weather you know, in March. Sad. It is sad, Mark, because <laughs> we had an exhibit You're that I think would have been packed. Yeah, it was really terrible February weather. and January were the April best months. April was cold. Yeah. And Amazing. What, is, what is the Thursday edition? Well, this is a new that they just launched um, last week, but it'll continue every month, called Third Thursday. So... It's going to be an emphasis on music, performances. Um, so they have a, they're kind of piloting it. That's my new favorite That's word, in piloting. That's addition to the Friday. It doesn't take yeah. the place. Yeah. No, it doesn't right. take yeah. the place. So it's, yeah. it's, it's just another way to get mm -hmm. people to come out downtown. I, I can see fun, with the you know. success of First Friday right. why you would add. And, and I would not be at all surprised if in the years ahead we're going to see more different days utilized, maybe more Fridays utilized. Well, we've talked about Saturdays right. too, um, like making First Friday a whole weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think you're right, especially with the number of restaurants popping up and people living downtown. I think there's Saturday's good, but I think Fridays are better because you more or less cater to the people getting out of work. Well, that's what and we've kind of, you're right. Most people Monday through Friday, most people. You know. I think Friday, if we do something on Saturday, this is how all projects, you know, they, they don't mm -hmm. just happen. You have to sit down and discuss yeah. oh, what's... Yeah. So Saturday, that might take a time to evolve, and maybe that would be more family-focused. But the third Thursday seemed like a good idea because, again, it's after work. Mm -hmm. People can I don't think you'd make in. the effort, though, if you weren't getting the response. No, that's, yeah. First Friday especially has become one of our premier... I mean, in the sense that we get people from all over. It's grown, you know, so... Well, I that's think, the other thing. Know. Even though it's in Scranton, yeah, there's people it's not just Scranton. Yeah. No, no, that's a that's a sign. So that that ties into the whole economic development focus that's sure. going on. You know, how do you get people into your? That's region. what the county. That's the payoff for the county is that it entices all the other businesses right. because they benefit from this. Because people want to know what's the payoff to the county. Well, indirectly, yeah, it come, it's funneled back from folks that you help by bringing in people. People, money, generally healthier living. I mean, there's a lot of payoff, you know. Healthier so. living, yeah. That's yeah, a good, I, I that's think a good point. that's my big thing lately yeah, is healthy communities, which I think yeah. entails all of this economic development, um, just positive mentality, quality of life. So I, I think it all comes back to the and, county. And ultimately. the other thing that's great is that other communities have seen it work. Mm -hmm. Right. And they are now trying it, but wisely they don't compete with each other. Somebody else no. might do it on a second Friday. Or the whole region's pretty cool, because you're right. The Pittston in the summer does third Friday, and Wilkes-Barre's second, I think. Yeah. And even so Tonkanic can... gets involved mm -hmm. somehow. How so, yeah. long have we been talking about yeah. selling this region as a region, yeah. as an area? Yeah, you're right. You know, that, that's just that's fantastic. But you're right about the healthy. We had Several weeks ago, we had a guest on from the YMCA, and about an influx of people joining the Y to stay and get healthy. I'm seeing Amazing. a lot of that emerging, which is another reason we're focusing on the dance and the exercise, the hopscotch, because like I think pe more people are running. It's great to see people running around Scranton mm -hmm. now. So yeah. I think we're kind of leaving our past of not that, you know, we're so proud of our coal mining history, right. but we also want to start emerging out of just being that. We want to be a healthy, environmentally great place to live and work and play. Well, there's so, so many you places know. you can, I mean, with the trails around here now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that was a game changer, if I could use that word, when yeah. the trail was That was a good in. thing about the railroads. Yeah. Unfortunately, when most of them went out of business, but they left behind nice, flat right-of-ways where now you can yeah. utilize those so with pretty. the D&H and the, the, you know, the central of New Jersey over yeah. here and the Lackawanna corridor yeah. rail trip. I'm from Taylor North. I mean, that's incredible. A lot of cities would really kill is. to have one of those. There's like four of them here. It's amazing. Yeah, we still, we have a legacy of, of natural beauty here that's just still amazing. So I think the trail opened that up to a lot of people. They were suddenly like, oh, this is a pretty cool place to sure, live. Sure. You know, to, you know, to so we've got the first Fridays. You're adding right. this third Thursday. June, you said, what's coming up in June? Well, or? we have June. Another thing my department does that I don't know if I've talked so much on this show is we do panels and workshops on different topics in the arts. So last year, we've always done like workshops, you know, how to start your arts business. But last year we started something new where we... We're taking the arts in dialogue with other disciplines. So we just did one in, in May called How Art the Arts Help Us Heal, which was kind of again on that healing and being healthy. But the one like in the art therapy. Yeah, thing, which we is tied huge. that in. Art right. And music so that's growing therapy. art and music huge. and that 
So June's... Oh, you mean my, like like painting and, and what it does for you? Yeah, you yeah. Therapeutic qualities Winston of things Churchill that you never, used yeah, to you never think of. Yeah. yeah, art yeah. and music therapy. It's yeah. the biggest thing music. the past so you're right. Years. We had a visual yeah. artist, a musician, a dancer. That's wonderful. Yeah, so it's a dialogue. So the one in June, on June 17th at the Cultural Center in the Ladies' Parlor, which is a beautiful room on the second floor, we're doing art and global culture. So we're going to look at how the arts um, helps us understand other cultures, uh, you know, what does art mean in a global world? So we'll yeah. have panelists that, you know, have experience with that topic. So, and again, it's, it's a, to encourage community dialogue and understanding. So that's going to be coming up in June. Um, you did mention we do support arts the on Arts on Fire. Fire yeah. is coming up. Yeah. Um, that's a big I event. I think there's some cool things going on, too, with the people we fund. I mean, that's sort of the, the neat thing, too, is when you see your, your funding dollars at work. I believe the Ghost Light Theater, which has been very active up in Clark Summit, is going to be doing The Tempest at the end of June. So I'm very excited about that. I've, I've actually never seen that Shakespeare play uh, so live. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about that. So I think June, in June you'll start to see, you know, the more of the outdoor activities um, and things like that. So I'm looking forward to kind of getting out in the nice weather. And uh, But I'm excited about the global panel. And then, the, you know, what, mainly what we're doing now, of course, David, is planning for our, July is a really busy month for us. Yeah. So you know, it might be too early to get into all that, but just so keep it on people's radar, we do kick it off with July 3rd, and then we do our art in the park, and then the arts on the square at the end of the month, so. It's a long weekend this year because the 4th of July is on a Tuesday, so it's going it, to be Friday through crazy. Tuesday. Yeah, I, you know, a I want good to year for it. I know. Um, I just want to make sure people know because we know we, the downside of blocking off the streets is we don't want the traffic. So we want to let everybody know that it's going to be on a Monday. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they'll either take the day off and come down or just, you know, stay after work and join us. So. Well, hats off <laughs> to you for all the planning involved in all these it's things. It's fun. And it takes a lot. I mean, I'm so thrilled since I started my job and since I moved back, which is over 15 years ago, the, the groundswell of people doing things is just really inspiring. Yeah. And, and the local talent yes. that participates. That always amazed mm -hmm. me. Yeah, you're uh, right. Because there was a time when you thought if you want to see the musicians come in, if you want to see the dancers come in, that's what they do. They come in from elsewhere. And that's not necessarily the case. You get no. some people that come in that are great. That's right. But you've got some real talent right in the area. Well, it's Absolutely. funny, and going back to Rusty's comment about art and healing, another program, it's not necessarily public, but if you unfortunately have a relative or in the hospital, you can benefit from it. We've been doing this really interesting partnership with Geisinger, and we've been using some of our talented musicians. It's called um, Art Heals Palliative Music Care. Oh. So we have two days a week musicians playing healing music outside of the oh, ICU wow. unit. And the response we've gotten has just been tremendous from people saying how much it helps them cope because that's obviously a difficult time sure. for friends and family. Um, but yeah, the amount of talent, like we have some great musicians who, and you know, you have to adapt because it's not a normal concert space and it's, it's more about creating an environment for people that's versus a great the performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're, yeah. we're hoping to see more of those types of programs too. Um, I'd love to work, you know, with veterans, with people You're always recovery. looking for something new. I know. Well, the Which is you, great. Uh, well, it was good, you know? It's funny. I, I love program design is probably my favorite thing to do. So, you know, when you have a successful, nothing runs itself, but usually things get well-oiled. So then when you have a well-oiled machine, it's on. time to move yeah, on. Well, yeah. you know? twice and start yeah, it gets a little better. I think blocks, really right. what I want to see, though, gets back, I just want to see the arts infused everywhere for all, and different things for different people. Yeah, you know, so. yeah and that, and that uh, brings up another yeah. question is, the audience for, quote, the arts in our area. Is it a particular age group? Is it, is it wide spectrum? What? Well, that's a great question. I mean, I think the, I think the challenge with the office and our, arts, our Office of Arts and Culture and the arts groups is art is for everybody. It's just the challenge of making sure, you know, you're appealing to all different tastes. Mm -hmm. So I, I've seen all age groups participate in the arts you know, from seniors down to even like little babies that come, you know, to art in the park or on the trolley. So I think that's the goal because especially my office is supported through taxpayer dollars. So um, that's why we're even trying to reach out to newer immigrant groups and refugee populations. So we really just want everybody to be part of the community and the art. So, sure. um, but I think it's like designing those programs that will appeal I mean, it's great when you have an arts festival or the, you know, I love seeing all, people of all ages. So yeah. things like that you'll get, you know. Well, I think it's also know. wise when you talk about turning to the various uh, ethnic groups right, that are represented in our area. Each of them has their own 
culture that that is worth looking into in terms of uh, of the food that they they yeah. produce in terms of their the uniqueness of their artwork and it's it's nice to celebrate that especially when you bring yeah. them all together and get a taste of all yeah i think that's always we've talked about that maybe be fun to do like an internet because international food festival because even our earlier immigrants think of the irish and polish and italian identities and german such good food here in yeah. northeastern pa and it continues with different people moving and they have here. the greek festival every yeah, year that's which right. is huge right up from the scranton, yeah, yeah, we have, uh, the scranton cultural center that's, who would think that the greek would be one of the biggest festivals here on north washington yeah. incredible yeah, the, I love that kind of stuff. We have such such gems here. Yeah, you know, so. and even though you're not directly involved in that, it, it actually fits into the overall scheme. Yeah, we're always just trying to promote everything because food, food to me is culture, and you know it's it's part of what makes a place great. You know, you have a staff, Maureen. You have most of the same staff that you had when this uh, came <laughs> to fruition. Kind of. I'm really happy we now have full, Chris Calvi, who's who's my right hands program manager. He was a consultant, but now is full time, which is really great. So now we have two full time people on the arts and culture side and you know we have our trolley team which is great Wayne Hiller and and our st our great staff they know their stuff that. yeah yeah so no we have, we have a good um, team over there um, I think the reason we're able to do so much again is partnerships are always important because we can't do this all ourselves so um, we're lucky to have so many great organizations and people in yeah. the community that we can partner but that with. And that brings to mind another question and, and again you're a county arts and culture department I think we all know that in, in, in Washington right now, um, there is a proposal that would drastically cut, cut right. funding for arts. Yeah. Uh, does that trickle on down? N no, in the sense, it doesn't, it wouldn't affect us directly because we're a county tax. It would, uh, changes nationally or federal funding can affect the groups we fund, so then they might need more money from us, which right. makes it tougher. You know, I've been following that debate obviously closely, and I, I, I look at it more positively. I think most people, again, no matter what side you're on, do support arts and culture. Because there was a great article in the New York Times a couple weeks ago about how there's a lot of Republicans that see the benefit, the economic benefit. So I don't want, I mean, anything can happen, but I, I can't imagine it being completely. Well, it's, it's wiped often out, one of the first you know? targets. It is, but now it? I think people are seeing it as beneficial to communities so it will it'll be interesting to see how that plays out that's the, po the power of yeah. positive thing i'm a huge republican and i'm all for culture and arts i think there's a lot more people than given credit for that's what i are. think yeah, i think you. that you do have yep. some extreme people I but agree. um i i can't i mean again i don't want to say nothing's possible but i and i think it wouldn't go down without a, a fight because mm -hmm. i think yeah. a lot of people see the value of it um, but you're right, if things, even on a state level, when some of our groups get affected, we're affected in the sense that even though we have a good chunk of change to support people, it only goes so far. So, you know, I, I sustainability Are you constantly getting new requests for funding? We're starting to now that we're seeing new, new groups. So, um, you know, eventually that may become a struggle. We're lucky, though, for now it seems to work out well, and um, yeah. we haven't had too much of a problem with that. Uh, and I mean, that wouldn't be a bad thing. The more groups we have, the, the better. They but always right. say there's so much funding if people just want to research and fill out the paperwork. Well, that's part and of that's my job, too. True. I do. I think there's a couple groups that I've been trying to encourage to write for some more funding that mm -hmm. maybe they're not. And one of the things is what we call in the nonprofit world capacity building. Sometimes you need that staff person to do it or volunteer. But that's where if my office can even help with that. I don't mind if I have the time, you know, to show people how to do it. And once you get a few under your belt, it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. but, well, uh, Rusty asked about staff. What about volunteers? Do you use volunteers? Yeah, I think, yes, we do. I have, a, I have an advisory arts council that's really helpful. Uh, like how can one, new recruits get in touch with they, you? You know, we're an advice. I take, if anybody's interested, we, you know, they can just contact my office. And, you know, we're always looking for new people. And we have a variety. Of, I have an event planning committee. So they help me with like the and, workshops. And that office and, is technically yeah. called? The oh, office? the Arts and Culture Department Arts for Lackawanna Culture County. Department. Yeah. Okay. Um, 570-963-6590. Okay. Just ask for Maureen or you can, this is an easy one to remember. Arts-culture at LackawannaCounty.org is our general email. So we oh. check those. If you go to the Lackawanna County website. Yeah, yeah it'll be a, one of the um, departments the down there. listed. Yeah. Yes. I asked you this once before when you visited us, but uh, curious. Do people come to you with ideas? You, are you looking for ideas? Uh, yes, oh, I, that's what I like. I have an Do open you get door. Them? Yes, 
Uh, I've gotten, you know, there's been a couple of people have come to me and, and, you know, if we can help implement them or at least guide you to where you can, you know, find funding or other supports. Yeah, ideas are important. And I think part of my office tries to guide people through that process of how do you take your idea into implementation? Because there's often a few steps along the way, of yeah, course. Yeah. So if, if we can, we, again, a popular buzzword is technical assistance. If we can help you, you know, because sometimes it's as soon as if, like even just knowing how to block off a street, you know, you're that's right. not yeah, something everybody right. would know you how to do. Just set up a, <laughs> right. Set so, up a horse and stop yeah, traffic. traffic. So if, if we can't always deal. offer you. Yeah funding we can offer also you know some guidance sure. and marketing and that kind sure. of stuff no I, I try to have an open door policy and I always tell people if I don't answer your email within two weeks I don't mind being nudged because you know sometimes you get so many ideas yeah. <laughs> but yeah no I, I if I can help people I try to it um, may be them. a good thing to remind people as they're watching this is time for artists and art supporters to unite because you don't think of yourself as participating in the arts or enjoying them but if you go to first Friday you've done it if you go to uh, the, the presentations of the music on uh, Courthouse Square, you've done mm -hmm. it. Uh, That's right. I think most people participate in it, even if maybe they don't think of themselves as artists. Yeah. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah. Even if you look at, last year we did a, a little temporary mural on the Leonard Building on Adams. So even if you're driving in your car and you look at that, if it catches your eye, you know, sure. that's a type of participation. So. Or walking on courthouse, like you mentioned, yeah. that's art too. And that's it's so, a county you know. thing, but you know the Labor Day Steamtown Festival brings people from oh, all over the huge. world. Not that it's yeah. a county thing, but I mean it's in the county. No, but yeah. we're interested in that. Absolutely. And again, in terms of tourism, that's we huge. like to get more people into the county. Yeah. So that and mm -hmm. La Festa and Parade Day are like three of our bigger ones here. Um, well, you got your work cut out for yeah. you for the summer, but you folks are going to enjoy the rewards. Oh yeah, of, I think it's going to be a good summer of that work. So uh, if you want information, check with the arts and uh, cultural department mm -hmm. of Black the county. Mm -hmm. You can call Maureen at. 570-963-6590. Just ask for Maureen. Maureen. It's a trolley museum, so. There you go. Thanks, Maureen. <laughs> right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. Us, it's always a pleasure. It. Thank yeah. you, Rusty. Good to see you, Dave. Mark, thank you so much Thanks, for Mark. keeping us in focus. I'm <laughs> David DeCosmo for ECTV Live. Until we see you again next week, here's hoping all your news is good.